contrary to the character of God. The Bible says in James 1.17 that every good and every perfect gift cometh down from God, the Father, for the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. How God anointed Jesus up that is with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good. Say good. Good, good. good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10 38. So we've got to get this picture. We've got to get this revelation. God is good. Anything that's stealing, killing, and destroying from you, your life, your love, is any person on the face of this earth, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, economically, is not God. It's the thief. Jesus said, I came to give life and to give that life more abundantly. So there's your Mason-Dixon line. There's your uh, divining line of the whole Bible. God is good. He's gracious. He's merciful. He's loving kindness. He's healing. He's deliverance. He's holiness. He's soundness. The devil is bad. He's wicked. He's evil. He comes Amen. to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, for us, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. If any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He's a new creation, a new creature. So the second, the moment you were born again, that person that used to be doesn't even exist anymore. Right. Now, the house didn't change. And, and the way the house used to think doesn't change right away. But once you're born again, now by the Spirit of God, by the regeneration of the person and the power of the Holy Spirit, the life of God inside of you now permeates your mind, permeates your body. And now not only is your spirit man, see we've been taught this all our life. Well, it's your spirit that's born again, but your body didn't change. <laughs> you understand that right away, but in essence really, that hidden man of the heart, the Spirit of God was never meant to stay hidden. Right. It was God's intention for him to infiltrate and permeate the way that you think. To infiltrate and permeate every cell of every organ of your body so that you walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. Our destiny, God's intent, is no different for your life than my, than, than Jesus' life. You understand that? And so 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17 says we're a new creature in Christ. All things are passed away. All things have become new and all things are of God. You are of God. Amen. Revelation, that will change your life. You'll never be the same ever again. Now, your MO is Mark chapter 16. Because you are of God, because you are a son of God after the son of God, now you can go and you can preach the gospel, you can go and lay hands on the sick, you can go and cast out devils, and anything that comes against you, it will not harm you, it will not hurt you. Yeah. Healing is by grace. Ministering healing is by grace. It is a gift of God, something that you don't earn. Jesus paid for it on the cross and to attribute sin and to attribute sickness in any way in the same breath with God is an abomination to the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's wrong with that sovereignty of God thing. It puts God and the devil in the same, like they're co-partners working together, and they are not. God does not use the devil to perfect you. Amen. Please, friends, that's been taught across pulpits. Faith preachers teach that stuff. It's wrong. Healing is an act of warfare. Say that with me. Say healing is an act of warfare. It's a warfare that was won by Jesus against the defeated foe, the devil. Now, as I said, his aim is to steal, kill, and destroy by deception. See, he's trying to deceive anyone who doesn't know the truth or won't stand up and fight against him. So when you have a warfare mentality, listen, and you know that you are not fighting to get the victory, this is a major issue. We're trying to get healed. You start from perfection. You start from finished. You start from done. Amen. Revelation. If you don't get that, you're always striving to get healed. I don't know why I can't get healed. I don't know why I just can't seem to overcome this. This is not condemnation, friends. I'm trying to make a point. You've got to start from done. You've got to start from perfected. You've got to start from it is finished. Because now all you're doing is just acting like it's so. If you don't have that revelation, you're constantly striving, trying to get God, trying to perfect yourself, trying to get in the right place to get God to give it to you or get you know, yourself in the right place to receive it. No. Jesus paid it all and he freely gave it to you. So now our position is to run off the devil. Our position is to run off the sickness and disease. You understand that? 
My definition of healing is not God, you know, fixing you. My definition of healing is removing the works of the devil by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So 1 John 3, 8 says this, For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy, render helpless, to par or paralyze the works of the devil. He, has com he accomplished that. That's done. That's finished. Now our job, our responsibility is to enforce Jesus' victory here on this earth in our lives into anybody else that we come in contact with. So wherever we go, wherever we see rebellion, sin, sickness, demonic activity, without reservation, with all of the Father's backing, uh, and, and, and we are to run the devil off and to give honor to God the Father by setting the captives free. See, I don't have to wait. I've already been commissioned to do that. Healing is an open act of warfare. That person that is oppressed, not anything against their personality, that's not right. Jesus yeah. paid for that. That's right. They are oppressed. God anointed Jesus to set the oppressed free. He has decreed and he has judged in favor of all those people. Psalm 103 verse 6, he has judged in favor of all those that are oppressed. So I don't care if a person is saved or unsaved. If they are oppressed, God has judged in your favor for you to be well. How are they going to get well? By Jesus, the person in power of the Holy Spirit, in you. You're going to go and give them healing. You're going to go and give them deliverance. You're going to go and give them the person in the power of the Holy Spirit to set them free. Now for yourself, if you need it for yourself, you've got the power source right in you. Now it's just you opening up your spirit and letting the power and life of God flow you know, from the Holy Spirit into your spirit. It is a battle of kingdoms. And this passage of scripture right here in Luke is the ministry and the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ to verify that. Now, we have this scripture in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. You don't have to turn there. We're going to look at some more scripture today. But in Matthew 11, 12, it says, it says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, you've got to understand this. Up to that time, this is the, the Gospels, and it says up to the time of John the Baptist, or up to the time of the prophets, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. But once the cross came, now we don't have to take the kingdom of God by violence. It's freely given to us. Now, but here's what we missed. We missed the attitude of this warfare mentality of taking the kingdom of God by violence. I don't have to take it by violence. It's been freely given to me. But now the attitude or the mentality of this warfare mentality needs to still be maintained because now when I see sickness and disease, when I see a person oppressed with a warfare mentality, it will cause me to go and help that person and set them free. You understand that? Now, uh, look at the look at verse, let's see where I'm going here. Look at verse 18 of Luke. 11. It says, If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. Now, here's what I want you to see in this verse. Satan has a kingdom. Yes. Ephesians 6 tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. But that kingdom is a defeated kingdom. You cannot properly interpret Ephesians chapter 6 without properly getting an understanding and revelation of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 says that he, God has raised us up, set us in heavenly places, and put all things underneath our feet. The point I want you to see in this warfare mentality, as healing as an open act of warfare, this is not an equal battle. He's under our feet. Amen. Don't make him an equal because he's not an equal. Run him off. Tell him to go. Use the name of Jesus. Exercise your faith and believe that what you do will come to pass. Amen. Don't put him on equal ground by constantly staying around and fighting him and battling him. Go to every single individual person and set the captives free. Once you tell the devil what to do, he's got to obey. What keeps him bound? You bind the devil. In Jesus' name, I forbid you. In Jesus' name, I forbid you to hold that person anymore. Okay, he's got to obey. In Jesus' name, I cast you out. I trust you out. I command you to go. Okay, he has to obey. What keeps him out? You believing that what you did will come to pass. That's the whole key. And so all of the symptoms and all of these things, after you do the Word of God, they have one intent, and that's to get you to doubt God's Word. 
is to get you out of faith and get you looking at the circumstances and situations, get you looking at the natural instead of looking at the Word of God and saying, this thing is done, this thing is finished. That's the whole intent of all that stuff.